Digital Construction Works is a services organization, primarily, that delivers uh, solutions that advance the uh, digital twin for construction. So it's really about advancing the industry and helping our users and their projects to become more automated and therefore more efficient, less waste, less overruns, etc., etc. We have two investors where Bentley comes from the design world and where uh, Topcon comes from the construction, the field work, right, the field world. The, the Topcon people and their users stand with their rubber boots in the dirt, right? The design people sit behind the rovers and doing their designs. And we have, uh, as you know, in the last couple of years worked on uh, a number of improvements in the construction industry. One of those was constructioneering, where we tried to, or where we have improved the workflow of going with your data from design data into construction data, and where you experience that the design people actually do not know very well what happens with the data during construction, where the construction people actually don't know very well uh, how this 3D design was made because the design is not so easy to construct. You have to unfold it and create smaller work packages before you know how to construct it, right? So those were two worlds. Those two worlds need to be brought uh, together. So uh, Topcon and Bentley have been working on that collaboration for several years, as you know. And uh, what is a good progression in the marketplace that they've said, it's going to, this is going to be, uh, go faster, we can speed this up by making sure that we organize a services organization that offers this as an integrated service. So we are that uh, digital integrator or that integration services organization that can take uh, technology and data from multiple vendors, not only Bentley and Topcom, but also from other vendors, and help to automate the construction uh, process and service the user. Yeah, we saw an opportunity uh, as we went around with constructioneering to, uh, uh, to help take the technologies that were entering the, the marketplace and deliver them to the customers in a way that they just don't have time to do today. You know, they have to find the people and the technologies and then implement them. And we thought we could put an organization together that can come and help them cross that chasm and do it a lot faster and more efficiently. So we want to uh, progress the uh, automation in construction so that a work is going to happen uh, faster. Everyone uh, has read uh, McKinsey reports and economic reports, how much money is uh, lost and wasted with projects that overrun or that have mistakes in them. And uh, the world's infrastructure would benefit from doing that more efficient. And so helping our users adopt the technology quicker and providing that as a service, that's the objective of the company. Uh, to a certain extent, I see digital construction works as a... We bring, uh, actually already at the start, hundreds, years, hundreds of years of expertise of the people that we've taken from the, the Bentley organization, the Topcon organization and some external people to form that, uh, uh, that group of consultants that has the experience of how to automate digital twinning for construction. Um, the fact that it got created by two separate companies is unique. I do not know any other example where multiple vendors have created one joint venture. I think that's a unique uh, situation. And nevertheless, our owners tell us to be agnostic about systems. So we are independent of where the technology comes from or where the data comes from. If the user says I have Revit data or the user says I have uh, SAP data, it doesn't matter. We will make sure that uh, we help them by uh, applying uh, digital twins. So also I wanted to say, and maybe you want to take over there, the process of creating and using digital twins, Bentley has talked about this for years, but there is still a limited amount of users that have actually put it in practice. Uh, and why is that? Because you have to understand surveying, and you have to understand data processing, and you have to understand the semantic data that belongs to the digital twin, etc., etc. 
by bringing our two companies together, we have the knowledge in-house to do that digital twin for you, if you want us to do it for you as a service. Or we can also, so that's from surveying to processing. Or you can also say, I want to learn to do it myself, but educate me. Help me to understand how to do this. And then we become consultative and we educate them how to do those processes. Yeah, we have the people that understand the processes and the technology. And we actually have created two labs as well. Uh, the Digital Twin Lab, which will go out into the field and prove out that the technologies can be brought together in a way that will improve the operational efficiencies, identify any gaps, and then we put those, uh, those observations into our solutions integration lab, which then closes the gaps by building bridges between the technologies to deliver digital solutions. What technology, there's a lot of them. Uh, what technologies to grow uh, faster. So I think number one is, is, is going digital twin. Uh, applying digital twins, that, that technology has now been proven for several years. We've got a good number of existing projects and users that have already done it. Uh, coming Thursday, Keith Bentley, the CTO of Bentley, gives his keynote. And this is the first year that his keynote is not about the vision of the future, but it's about how to deliver digital twins today. And he brings users to the keynote who have already done it. That's already proven, right? So I think digital twin for us is now a proven technology that can bring it to the table today. On the surveying side and the data capture side, there's proven technology, whether you use aerial photography or drones or terrestrial scanning, where those technologies come together as well and where we have a combined unique offering that allows us to take data from multiple data sources and bring it into one solution, right? So uh, that's another unique uh, deliverable that is working today, we can prove it today, and those uh, technologies can, uh, imp can bring the industry forward uh, directly. I, I want to uh, mention a third one, which is 4D. So 4D for construction, taking the data and continuously updating your digital twin model with what's happening in the construction industry, uh, in the construction project, and making sure that you stay on plan and that you can also, if you make changes, that those changes influence your planning process. That's a great way. The best project that I use as an example for 4D planning is, uh, I don't know if you're from Madrid, but this is the FC Barcelona uh, Stadium. You may have seen the, have you seen the project, the Synchro project? Uh, so every second week, FC Barcelona plays in the stadium of FC Barcelona, if there's no strikes. So every two weeks, the construction has to stop, has to be far enough and ready enough so that people can safely go and watch the match. And then after the match, for two weeks, the construction continues again. So that is as live a construction as you can get, right? It's quite a unique project. It's in Spain, you should write about it. Maybe you've all, you already have. Well, it's interesting when you talk about um, connecting a construction project. You know, the tools are all getting smarter and they're becoming more and more automated and some are even becoming autonomous, you know, with robotics and things like that. So uh, if you look at the way that both Bentley and Topcon have connected everything from the uh, mobile workforce to the tools that are used on the project, uh, the demands for IoT and 5G are only going to be uh, greater and greater. And quite frankly, it'll be uh, ubiquitous across the construction site as we connect all these different people to a system that is actually planning and executing construction in a very efficient way. What's always interesting to see is, is we uh stare at one particular industry and we would say wouldn't it be fantastic if we use IoT or wouldn't it be fantastic if we use uh, 3D and BIM and etc. When you look at other industries they've done it 10 years ago, right? So it's in itself it's not a new invention. What's new is to apply it to the construction industry of what's already been proven somewhere else, right? Just to put it in perspective. Well, maybe first is what industry. So, uh, if uh, already for decades, 
if you would design a nuclear plant or if you would design a high-speed rail, you have a lot of high-speed rail in Spain, uh, those have been digitized a long, long time ago. And why is that? Because the risk, if something goes wrong, is so huge that the risk aversion and the automation has been used in order to just squeeze out any, poss any possible bad things that can happen, right? When you go to construction, if you put your shovel in the wrong place in the ground, how much, well, sometimes you can create trouble, but there's no instantaneous trouble usually, right? Depends and on how so big your shovel is probably. How big your shovel is and if there's a cable under the ground. Yeah. But so those are industries that have accepted a certain level of risk because typically the uh, resulting uh, damages are not so big. So uh, the industries with the highest risk, oil and gas and offshore and nuclear, etc., the industries with the highest risk are the industries that are the most automated. And so uh, construction and then agriculture, they sit at the very end of you know, how much goes wrong if the wrong plant got uh, watered uh, twice or uh, it's just the damages are not so big. Uh, geographically, uh, the West uh, or uh, the mature markets, the mature industries, uh, believe that they are the furthest and sometimes that's the case, you know, uh, North America, uh, Western Europe. Uh, but on the other hand, the emerging markets are markets that can leap over the next generation of technology the easiest. They are quicker to adopt. I think uh, we see in a huge degree of adoption in China. As an example, India is doing pretty good because they have a lot to construct. They have no historic standards or workflows that hold them back as much as, as it would hold back in our area. Eh? And we have regulations in the Netherlands and regulations in Germany and regulations in Spain and regulations in Italy. And unfortunately, every country is different. It's one united Europe, but every country has got their own rules. You go to China, it's one massive market. It's not so regulated yet. They have some regulations as well, but it's not so regulated yet. And so that allows them to advance much quicker. So do not underestimate the emerging markets. I think uh, it would be uh, arrogant to think that Europe or America is always ahead of the rest. I don't think that that's the case. I think the countries that have had uh, economic downtimes have had a hard time to keep up with the investments to keep on going forward, so that's, a, that's an influencer as well. Uh, that's a very good question because I think governments can be much more proactive to uh, realize that there's a new technology and typically new uh, technology is not regulated, right? And innovation and regulation don't always help each other. Eh? Sometimes they are in uh, competition. So it's very important that a country and a government has an innovation mentality and that they encourage that and that they also realize that the people that have to build the infrastructure, the that have to construct the infrastructure, they have to innovate as well. And just trying to write a contract and give the contract to the lowest bidder does not always bring you innovation. Eh? It brings you people that have done it uh, 20 years in the same way and are going to repeat doing it in the old-fashioned way. So, yeah, I think that can be a more proactive role for the government. You're saying digital twins. Uh, we have, uh, there's examples with uh, cities that have gone digital twin. Uh, we've used Helsinki, you saw that yesterday on the slides, but there is also Paris and there's also Marseille and there's also there's quite a few cities and smart cities is a big subject. So digital twinning for cities is a, certainly a subject. Uh, there's a number of projects. We have a project with Shell where they monitor construction and they process the data once a week to look at the progression of the site. That's a, a, there's, there's multiple of them, but that's one example of where, it's, uh, uh, where it is uh, utilized. Uh, digital twin in transportation. Do you have anything that comes to mind instantaneously? None off the top uh, of my head that we can that we can share a lot, yet. A lot of the a lot of the big engineering firms. You know the uh, 
Dragados and uh, AECOM and uh, they are all making sure that they can provide services that do digital twinning but they provide the services themselves which is fine which is good because it moves the industry forward right so there's examples of digital twinning there's also examples of success with uh, 4D I gave you the example of uh, FC Barcelona I know that there's an example with a museum in Amsterdam that is getting built in 4D. Uh, Synchro has been very uh, popular. There's uh, English projects where uh, some of the big uh, buildings that have been built in, the, in uh, London downtown have been built with Synchro uh, technology and 4D uh, progression monitoring. There's a nice AVI where you can see the, the construction site and the design comparison to go up at the same time. Uh, I think this is, uh, it needs to go from the bigger projects to all the small projects. That's maybe one of the steps that still need to happen. The, the small construction companies are always the latest to automate. They still want to have a 2D uh, floor plan so that they know what to build, right? Well, no, I, I think uh, as far as projects go, we've already been underway with some clients, uh, especially in the chemical processing or oil and gas uh, uh, space. So we've been working on those uh, as, we as we speak. We've been connecting several of the tools that, uh, that Bentley and Topcon uh, uh, produce. And, uh, and actually, we've also brought in integrations from our partner O3 that we announced here at uh, Urine Infrastructure and, uh, and have delivered to a customer a, a solution that has, uh, at least uh, from our uh, feedback has helped them deliver a project in a much more efficient way. The importance of the labs, but we mentioned that, um, and making sure that we can prove the technology another before we apply it at the user, I think that's yeah. a very Yeah, another point. big factor too for us is the, uh, the community approach that we're taking with this. Um, we're not just about the products that come out of Topcon and Bentley. We're, uh, we're an agnog agnostic organization and we're inviting uh, technology partners to come into our labs to help uh, prove out solutions with us that can deliver a, a better digital uh, solution to the customer. Um, and, and then also partnering with service providers so that we can go into local regions and have uh, service providers that we're familiar with, that we have utilizing our solutions to deliver to a customer to help them cross that chasm faster on their, their journey, if you will, into uh, digitalization. So.